While many believe the internet to be a revolution in itself, it is in fact the most formidable extension of a revolution that began over 40 years ago. Just as the printing press was the media summum of the industrial age, the internet is the media summum of the information age. When I started my company, Elden Software, almost six years ago, the web was little more than black text on gray pages. The content was mostly personal. There was hardly any corporate presence at all. However, once marketers realized how many people were using this thing, and how many people were going to, they jumped on the internet as the next great broadcast medium, whether television liked it or not. The mistake of most corporations that try and take advantage of the internet today is the same mistake those marketers made years ago. They labeled the internet broadcast. Because as marketers, broadcast is all they understood. In fact, the internet is the precise opposite of broadcast. It is distributed, multidirectional, and pervasive. It defies any form of top-down central control. It allows people to communicate with people, rather than just absorb feeds of filtered information. In short, it levels the playing field, putting ultimate control in the hands of each and every individual, your hands and mine, simultaneously. During the course of my presentation, I would like to offer my perspective on how the internet empowers the individual and drastically changes all the rules from the passing industrial era. In his book, Connected Intelligence, Derek de Krippoff states, the internet is not a mass medium, it is not a one-way medium, it is not even a two-way medium, it is a my-way medium. This quote very well explains the fundamental difference between the internet and any other media to date. Prior to the internet and its multimedia counterpart, the web, there were several centrally controlled broadcast media services available. The most similar to the net was the BBS, and the most dominant, of course, was television. The key word there is broadcast, which implicitly means one way. A producer decides what to publish, and the audience, a much broader group including, well, as many people as possible, um, can choose from a limited number of available channels. The internet, however, is really qualitatively different from any media that precedes it. It offers a way for people to create their own content for their own media. Marshall McLuhan, the godfather of the information age, and Derek's mentor, said it best. If the medium is the message, then the people, really, are the content. Why did the internet boom when so many similar corporate services fail? Precisely because they were corporate. Both the success and attraction of the internet is largely due to the innovation, initiative, and product of the individual, independent mind. In 1967, Marshall McLuhan published his groundbreaking book, The Mediums and Massage. In it, he stated, all media are extensions of some human faculty, psychic or physical. The wheel is an extension of the foot, the book is an extension of the eye, clothing an extension of the skin, and electric circuitry an extension of the central nervous system. The internet, then the web, argues the Kirchhoff, are not coincidental advancements, but rather the third and fourth layers in a global electronic infrastructure. This electronic skin that we all wear began with the telegraph, much later followed by the telephone. In 1967, the year of McLuhan's book, we were introduced to the internet, known then as ARPANET. Finally, in 1991, we all saw the web. What all these advances have in common is twofold. First, none of them could exist without the establishment of the layer of four. Like all complex distributed systems, the web began with a simple system that worked. Second, with each successive layer, our perception of time and space got smaller. When you can send a signal across the world instantly, it suddenly doesn't seem so vast. When you can send a thousand different signals to a million different recipients instantaneously, it seems smaller still. It stands to reason that when our perception of time and space changes, our perception of human communication as a whole changes. How we perceive ourselves, each other, and the organizations we deal with changes as well. The more drastic the communications medium, the more drastic the perceptual change. Basically, the smaller the Earth gets, the closer we get to each other. The Internet is the most drastic and most rapidly ubiquitous change yet in human history. It extends our faculty for communication so that we wear all of humanity as our electronic skin. This fundamentally changes each of our individual roles as consumers, producers, citizens, innovators, and even how we perceive ourselves. I will discuss each of these perspectives in further detail, both how they operate in the old systems and how they will operate in the new.